hello. Wow, there are a lot of people here. Like, <laughs> um, how is everyone? Is everyone having fun? Enjoying themselves? I'm having a lot of fun actually being on this side of it and not being able to watch things because last year I was helping out, so it's good to actually be able to like, watch some of the stories. Um, so I'm incredibly grateful to be here to be able to share my story today. Um, so my personal um, story of mental illness began when I was really young. So I was around six or seven when I found out that my mom's dad, my grandfather, had committed suicide. Um, and because of his choice, mental health and mental illness has always been something that we've talked about a lot in our family. And that's been both good and bad. It's been great because it's been able to give me an outlet for when I'm feeling stressed out. And people are very open and honest about what they're feeling in my family, but it's also really hard because on some days when I don't want to think about it, when I don't want to think about depression or anything, um, I've had to sometimes think about it and really brought stuff to mind um, when I've been having a hard day. So that's been really hard. Um, I never knew him, so this happened way before I was born, but because of his choice, this has always been something that's been talked about in my family. Um, more recently, my mental health became much more of a focus when, um, sorry, in my life when I experienced, like so many in this room, the debilitating effects of depression and anxiety. I was having such a hard time my senior year of high school that I asked to be hospitalized. Only, only wishing that someone else would take control of my life because I knew I couldn't be trusted with it. I went to the sixth floor of Hasbro for three weeks, um, then went to partial and actually has, had to be readmitted a uh, second time before I was done with inpatient. Um, but since then, I've had me weekly meetings with therapists. Though my hospital stay and leave of absence from school only lasted a couple of months, it's only the very beginning of my um, journey through mental health um, and coping with my own mental illness. So I actually just finished my freshman year at Washington University in St. Louis, and I would love to share a poem that I wrote before continuing to talk to you all about my story. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Actually, no, I am not fine. And as these words come out, I feel myself deflate, the air leaving my lungs like the spurt of air that flies out of an untied balloon as it floats its way around the room. I stand before you, my not yet wizened brain, full of facts from my freshman year at college, stuffed in so tightly they nearly suffocate. School. School was fun, until it wasn't. Until the nights up during homework turned into nights laying awake for hours, just w wishing that my brain would shut off. Until the weekend parties became my escape and the sixth drink of the night might just be the one to help me forget how I feel. There's a statue on campus of a bunny, and during the colder months, someone I don't know wraps his wiry body in knitted vests and oversized sweaters. Each day, it sits in the thinker's pose, its long arms and legs folded upon itself as it listens to the chapel bell's chime every 15 minutes. I, like the bunny, adorn myself in layer upon layer, but what good is a sweater to protect me from the cold when the ice that I feel emanates from inside my bones? If someone were to take an x-ray of me, I wonder if they'd see the thorny vines that have wrapped themselves around my ribs and, ribs and curled through my hips right down to my toes. I wonder if they'd see the creature that lives inside my brain, squirming through each crevice, hiding within the shadows that it itself has created, staying there until I wish I wasn't alive. Week after week, I put my body through the paces, doing everything I'm supposed to be doing, talking to my doctors, swallowing my pills, and only rarely spending the entire day in bed. The sharp dullness of depression presses me to question every friend and dream I've ever had, while the rolling waves of anxiety force me into folding upon myself as I yearn for the smallest state with the biggest ocean and the freedom of living without deadlines and due dates, without obligations and tuition fees. Intro to psychology. 300 people stare at the projected slides at the front. Hands hover above lit up keyboards, waiting attentively to write down each precious word spoken in case the next sentence appears on an exam question. A professor rattles off disorders, but my consciousness is elsewhere. How can I sit in a class and listen to someone make what I went through? My struggle, my reality, seems so according to textbook. With the winter breezes come mornings and nights wrapped in my cloud comforter, pretending there is no outside pretending that these four walls and the worn-down path to the pantry are the only things that exist outside my head. When I start using my conditioner again after 13 months of a different brand, the scent smudges my logic and I return to the hospital again, face freshly dried, hair dripping droplets onto the back of my t-shirt. You know, it's funny knowing full well I could tell you the cell potentials of any element on the periodic table and what damage to Broca's area will do to a child, 
and why DNA winds itself up so tightly, almost as tightly as I do when I'm stressed? How do I survive when my body is a house, not a home for my soul, and every breath I take feels like I'm infringing upon depression's secret lair? My fourth grade teacher once said that every time you learn something new, your brain gets a new wrinkle, a brand new shelf for that knowledge to be stored upon until it becomes useful again. Even though I know that our brains aren't really folding in on themselves, becoming as creased and bent as a piece of paper in my idle hands, I'd like to imagine that my smooth brain becomes more worn with each fact I acquire. I'm not going to pretend that getting out of bed is easy, that the panic attacks don't come anymore, or that my depression doesn't drag me underwater more times a week than I can count. But I can tell you that my present self thanks my past self for not making that decision to end it all, that every second on this earth is worth it, and that with each passing day, my brain thanks me for its new wrinkles. Thank you. Um, So I'm obviously no expert at public speaking. Um, Honestly, I'm really terrified to be up here right now. Uh, I've never done slam poetry or spoken word or read any of my own poetry before in front of anyone. Um, And I have such a hard time memorizing things that I have to have this speech right here in front of me. So thank you for letting me do that. Um, But today I want to talk about having new experiences and how important pushing yourself past what you've done before is. Of course, this is probably something you've heard before tons of times, but here we go. There's a concept that I learned about in developmental psychology this past semester that is called the zone of proximal development. It was introduced by Vygotsky in the early 1900s as a concept concerning children and how they learn. He basically decided that any and all people have two different levels of cognitive ability, one that they can do on their own and one that they can do with assistance from someone else. The difference between these two abilities is called the zone of proximal development. His theory was that it was in this space that learning occurs. There are a lot of things that I learned in developmental psych that didn't really make sense to me or seem really hypothetical or actually just plain boring, Um, but this one I really liked. People inherently need help and structure, a scaffolding to lean on when things get hard, someone or something to assist them through whatever it is they are facing. This is so important in other aspects of life besides just cognitively, but is never truer than when it is being applied to struggles with mental health. When I was going through the worst of my depression, the only thing that kept me going through the day was the knowledge that I had people out there who, to support and love me through it. But at some point, others can only do so much. Ultimately, it must be you working on yourself, and that is where the zone of proximal development comes into play. There will be things you cannot do. Some days, it will feel like you can not possibly get out of bed. Others, making yourself go out with friends will seem like an insurmountable task. But pushing yourself past what you think you can do and challenging your brain towards growth will only help in your recovery. It is with the same idea in mind that one can explain the concept of a wrinkled brain to a fourth grader. You look at a photo in a book of a cartoon brain and all over are these lines. One can imagine as we learn our times tables and memorize spelling words that our brain wrinkles more and more. It's not a very scientific explanation, of course, but it's one that I've always enjoyed. Anyways, what I'm trying to get at is that the only way to grow is to push ourselves into trying new things. This past year, I've pushed myself into try different forms of art, whether it be ceramics, stained glass window making, painting, calligraphy, knitting, or spoken word poetry like today. Each time I've been terrified, but each time I have grown from pushing myself into that zone, past where I've gone before. Throughout your life, there should be moments at which you leap out of your comfort zone with the expectation that you will land somewhere completely unknown. This is encouraged. This is healthy. This is something that you're supposed to do. It's scary, right? But it's every bit as necessary to life as eating or sleeping or breathing. There's a really well-known Eleanor Roosevelt quote I'm sure most people have heard, which is, do one thing every day that scares you. I never knew how important this was until this past year. There were times during my freshman year where I doubted all of my abilities, where I knew what I had been doing, whether it had been in my chem lab, hanging out with my floor mates, or joining a new club. It wasn't working. I wasn't happy at all, often wanting to spend the entire day in my room. I was taking some ridiculous classes that I didn't want to be taking. Sorry to my grandmother, who's a chemistry professor, who's actually here today. Hi. (laughs) Um, But chemistry really is not my thing. 
Um, I'd always excelled in school, many subjects coming easily to me, and I felt stupid and inadequate in these classes. But during these months where everything I thought I knew was turned on its head, I challenged my ex myself to explore other options like art. In pushing myself to try new things, pushing myself into Vygotsky's zone of proximal development, I realized that I had passions that I didn't even know. At each one of these moments, I told myself that I had gained a new wrinkle. So I'm going to ask everyone to try something new each day, challenge them to follow me as we forge our own paths and create more wrinkles together. <laughs>